Hey everyone, I wanted to make this video talking about my sturdy gun safe that I got delivered about two weeks ago now. Um, I'm making this because when I was looking to buy one of these, I couldn't find any uh, super recent videos. The most recent one was probably about 12 months ago, and then before that, I would say five to six years ago. Um, so this one's just one that's a little more current for anyone that might be looking to buy one of these in the future. This is the 28 by 22 model non-fire lined with the magnum steel package now what that is is they take their most popular package which is a four gauge body and a three eighths door and they weld three sixteenths plate all the way around the safe in addition to that the left and right door jams um, are also reinforced and on this safe i opted for them to reinforce the top and bottom door jams as well and you can actually see here um, this is that 3 16 plate that's welded to the door. And they cut it out around the hinges um, to allow you to remove the door still. Now, I found that to be a necessity for this particular safe in my scenario. Um, the shipping weight on this safe is just below 1,100 pounds, and I had 16 steps to move it down to get it into my basement. Now, if you're just moving it from your garage into an office or a bedroom, um, laundry room, what have you, it's probably more effort than it's worth to remove the door, um, but coming downstairs, any weight that I could shed um, was a must in my opinion. So it, it is pretty difficult um, to get it back on. I had to use a floor jack. Uh, even with two guys, uh, we weren't able to get it lifted and aligned. Um, it, it was just too difficult. So we threw the floor jack under there and that helped out tremendously. Now, before we get inside the safe, I wanted to talk about this door gap here. Um, like many written views, reviews, and many video reviews, um, they touch on that door gap, and that's for good reason. It is extremely tight, um, so much so that I don't think you could fit a credit card in there. Um, the tolerances are just that tight. Um, now the widest part of the door gap is actually down here um, at the bottom. You can see there, and it's it's not wide by any means, but it is wider than the rest of the door gap. Um, it's still tight enough that you're not gonna fit a crowbar or any kind of tool in there. Um, just something that I noticed, and I do wish was a little more uniform, um, but it would, not, it would not prevent me from buying another one of these by any means. Also, I wanted to touch on the door handle here. Um, several, videos have mentioned that this is loose and sloppy. Um, I don't find that to be the case whatsoever. Now, I don't know if Sturdy Safe saw those videos and they changed the design to make it stiffer, um, or if, you know, perhaps I just got lucky, um, but it is extremely stiff and, and I'm very happy with it in that aspect. Um, so opening this guy up, the Magnum steel package becomes immediately apparent uh, with the door here. That is 9 sixteenths of an inch thick, solid steel. Um, and it reminds you of that every time you open and close this door. It's, it's extremely heavy. Now don't confuse that with being difficult to move because it operates very smoothly, um, but it is heavy. Now, I opted for the non-fire line version, like I had mentioned earlier, um, and that's why you see those shelves here. So if you do choose to get the Fireline version, there's a piece of sheet metal that goes all the way down to the bottom. And then the fire lining, of course, is in this gap here. Now, you can store quite a bit on these shelves. I just threw some, some handguns and miscellaneous stuff in there. Um, the only thing they do say to be careful of is that you not block these lugs um, because if you got something in the way, it could make it potentially very difficult to get into your safe. Um, so be mindful of that if you're using those for storage. Now I added uh, just some cheap lights so I could see a little better. They're nothing fancy um, by any means. Oh, there we go. Um, but anything to help me see a little bit better, I, I'm happy with. So if you look in the back corner, um, you can see those welds. And those welds actually run all the way down to the bottom. And those are half inch thick welds. Now... Those are in all four corners. Um, it's hard to get the phone behind this door jam so you can see them, but they are they are there. 
on both sides here. And you can see uh, down at the bottom here, there's this joint. And what that is, um, on the Magnum steel package, on a 60 inch safe, because you have an option to get a 72 or a 60 inch. And I chose um, the 60 inch. So what they do with that is they run the plate 48 inches down and then they stop it about 12 inches off the bottom. Now I figure this is the last safe that I'll ever buy, um, unless I run out of space, in which case I'll just get another one. Um, I had them go ahead and take that steel plate all the way down to the bottom. I figured, um, you know, I'm spending so much money on this and it took uh, about two months to make. I'm gonna have it made exactly how I want it. So that's what I chose to do. Um, as far as the quality of the interior goes, overall, I'm happy with it. Um, they say this shelf here can hold 150 pounds, which I believe it. Um, I mean, I was pushing on it pretty hard there and there's no sagging or um, twisting issues like that. Now, buying a sturdy safe, you're not buying it for a fancy interior. And I knew that going into it. Um, if you do buy one of these, just know going into it that you're not going to get, you know, one of those fancy Brownell or Canon interiors. Um, you're spending money for, for purely the, the steel on this guy. And um, the, the thickness of the body, I did forget to mention, is 7 sixteenths of an inch thick. So the door is 9 sixteenths. So the body is just a little bit, little bit thinner than the door, but still um, quite a bit thicker than their standard body or their most popular package. These side shelves here, uh, they do include three of those. I just put the one in right now. Um, my short barreled rifle there is too short to fit in the gun rack. Um, and yeah, I could just lower the gun rack down, um, but my M1 back there, it kind of fits um, nice and tight at the handguard where it's at. And if I were to lower the rack, um, you know, this part of the stock is too thick. So I opted just to give my SBR a, a booster seat to sit on so to speak, uh, but those are fully customizable. You can put them wherever you want. Um, the flooring here, when I got it, it was just a loose piece of carpet, uh, which again, I knew I wasn't paying for a fancy interior, uh, but I did want something a little nicer and something that would hide the uh, nuts and, and uh, wedge anchors that I used to bolt this thing down. So what I did here was I just took some 5 8 particle board and I cut it to fit the bottom of the safe. And then I actually had the wood flooring, um, some scrap left over from when I did my living room. So I just cut that to fit and threw that down there. Nothing fancy, it's not gonna win any awards for craftsmanship, um, but I thought it just made the overall look of the safe a bit better. Now something to note when I bolted this down, um, there's three bolt down holes. There's one like in the front middle, in that back left corner and then in that back right corner. And when I initially did this, I just tightened down one all the way and then I moved to the next, tightened it down all the way and then finally to the, to the third one and tightened it down all the way. And when I did that, I'm assuming it caused the body of the safe to shift just enough that when I closed this door, um, the top part of the door here actually came into contact with the door jam and it made it very difficult to close and also very difficult to open. And you can actually see um, these rub marks here where it came into contact with the door jam. Now, it didn't do that before I bolted it down, so I set out kind of on a mission to figure out why it was doing that. And the resolution that I found was I loosened up all three bolts and then starting in that back left, and then I moved to back right and then front. So just in a triangular pattern, I tightened each one by one foot pound at a time until I got to 40 foot pounds. And that uh, eliminated my issue. This door opens and close, closes uh, just really smooth now. No, no hanging up or other issues. And then what I did when I bolted it down was I actually took um, these bearing plates, they're called, and they're made by Simpson... Uh, strong tie 
Yeah, they're three inches by three inches and a quarter inch thick. And then what I did was I just put them down each spot that there was a concrete anchor and then I put a washer and a nut over the top of this um, just to give a little more surface area um, to help pull that safe down tight to the floor. Um, overall, I'm extremely, extremely happy with this safe. I would say if you're considering it, um, you know, don't hesitate and, and absolutely buy it. I mean, the craftsmanship is just phenomenal. Um, Alyssa helped me quite a bit, um, a pretty tremendous amount, actually. I must have called her three times to change up my order, and uh, each time she was just incredibly patient with me. Um, you know, never got an attitude or anything like that and, and gladly helped me out. So it was just a phenomenal company. Um, and if I ever do run out of space, um, then I, I will not hesitate to buy another safe from them. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, this was my first YouTube video. So if you have any pointers, um, to make better ones in the future, please throw those in the comments. Or if you have any questions about the safe, uh, also throw those in the comments because I'm sure I forgot something. Other than that, thanks for watching.